don't get concerned. I told early service, just because I'm laying out six pages of notes, I can't wait to find out what I'm going to preach. And so I do know this right here. Uh, we're talking about the power of a made-up mind. This morning I want to talk to you about having a transformed mind. And so let's start with... Let's start with Romans chapter 12, and let's just kind of read this together. Romans 12 and, and 2, Cherie, if you could get that up for us, please. Romans 12 and 2, familiar passage of Scripture. And last week, uh, while we're getting that, that up there, uh, last week we was talking about uh, just having a made-up mind. And how, how many, We didn't even make it to McDonald's. For the ones that were here and all of that right there, and I was kind of ragging on all of that right there And when we've pulled in in times past. And it's not like the menu ever changed. The only thing that changes is the prices on there, but it's still going to come on a bun. It's going to get a French fry and something to drink. You know, it's kind of the way it goes there. And so, and, and, and my beloved will be saying, well, I just want to wait and see till we get there. And it's like, come on. And make up your mind. How I many all know there's power in a made up mind? Amen. That's what we was talking about last week. And and, and so having your mind made up. Uh, I was thinking about um, yesterday as I was going home uh, from church here. Yesterday was in, and we had a we had a memorial service here yesterday for one of our uh, brothers uh, here in the community that had passed, and and was headed home. Uh, how many all have ever seen? Uh, this is kind of graphic, but this I mean this is the Ozark Mountain, so y'all will get it. It's it's I mean it's it's where we live. How many all have ever just seen a flat squirrel on the center line? That is an absolute picture of what a double-minded can't get it together, can't figure out which way. If you want to know what happens when you can't make up your mind the next time you see a squirrel on the highway, I was going home yesterday, and this big red squirrel, he was a gorgeous red squirrel, big fox squirrel, and he's right in the middle of the road, and he darts over here, and I think, he's got it made. And then he darts back, and I thought, he's goner. And then he darts back, and he's got it made. And I'm in a hurry. I'm going home. I'm not willing for... I don't break for squirrels. Look over at your neighbor and tell them, don't be squirrely. Huh? Don't be squirrely now. All right. I don't break for squirrels. Anyway. Yeah. All right. So as I passed by, I don't know which way the squirrel went, but he made a right decision because I didn't see him in the rearview mirror and I never felt him under the tire. So good job on, on that one right there. I, I had nothing against the squirrel, bless his heart. Amen. So make your mind up. Look over at your neighbor with a smile and tell him, make your mind up. Amen. Just make your mind up. Today, uh, the world that we live in, we was talking about uh, the world of the Antichrist and those things that we can see coming. We was talking about last week out of Second Theth. <laughs> my brain's out running my mouth right here. Got the spirit of Sylvester on me. Sorry about that. You, yeah. anyway, Second Thess. Slow down, DL. Second Thessalonians chapter two, the whole chapter, and we was talking about that last week. And it paints a picture of the Antichrist and a lot of the things that's going on. And so when we were drawing attention to the fact that we can see a lot of the things that we can see coming in the in the system uh, today, we can see a lot of those things, those forerunners or some of those parallels that are coming. And so as we look at this passage right here today, we're going to be talking about a renewed or a transformed mind. And one of the most beautiful pictures of a transformed mind is in the story that Jesus tells in Mark chapter 5. Of uh, the, the, A lot of the time when you read in your Bible, have a subheading there, a subtitle, and it calls it the maniac of Gadara. What a way to, what a way to be labeled in the Bible. How many of y'all know that's, what, that's who he was, but that's not who he is? Amen. He wound up, the scripture says he, he, he wound up sitting clothed and in his right mind. We'll get to that in a little bit. Everybody say the right mind, huh? If you have a right mind, you can have a wrong mind. But it comes through transformation. Um, when we look uh, at our world today, we look and we can see that uh, there is a catastrophic mess that's going on. And, and when, I, when I think about God, if I, if I could have my way about this, there would just be this awesome, this, this, this huge blanket change, this, this, this powerful transformation that would take place literally at, at, at an immeasurable. How many of y'all would like to have that kind of a transformation? But the reality is it happens, now listen to me, it happens one life at a time. Revival happens one life at a time. Transformation happens one life at a time. Listen to this. And one name at a time do those names get written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Everybody say one at a time. 
So this year, um, we'll talk through some election numbers just for a moment there, and it's not about politics in this. I want to talk about conservative Christians. There was 31 million conservative Christians. That's what the numbers that I've been reading. 31 million conservative Christians that voted. What would it be like next time around in a couple of years if each one reached one? Right? That would be transformation. See? Not just of uh, of a home, but of a of a of a church, of a community, of of a neighborhood, of a state, that and that's powerful to think in that. And so, as we talk about one, how I many all know when Jesus left the ninety nine, he went to go get one, one, one's really important. I don't know that he knows any limits or any boundaries to go and just get one. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to join you from back here. Excuse me for turning my, my, my back on the camera, but let's read this together. Everybody read this with me. And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. In the scripture that we was reading last week in 2 Thessalonians, and you can go back and check on it for yourself, it says that they had not gotten a love for the truth, that they was given strong delusion then that they would believe a lie. If you won't believe truth, if you reject truth, now, what do you have left to believe? Everybody believes something. Amen? Everybody believes something. If you won't believe truth then what do you have left to believe? What you believe matters. What you do with what you believe matters just as much. Amen? Now, let's look, and, and, and I want you to just, that word transformed, let's talk about it. We, we mentioned it last week. We'll talk about it just a little bit. That word transformed right there literally is where we get, uh, the root word of that Greek word there is, is metamorpho. It's where we get our, our word, our English word metamorphosis. And it literally is to completely change from one form totally into a completely different form. It's the caterpillar, one form, completely changed through metamorphosis to the other form of a butterfly. Okay, that's the same context or same concept. And so the Apostle Paul teaches salvation in this context. He said, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are what? Become new. All things are become new. Completely new creation, a new creature in Christ. You can't put new wine, what? Into old skin. Look over at your name and tell them, don't be an old bag, right? Amen. Can't put new wine in old skins. I mean, he says you can't sew a new piece of cloth onto an old garment. If you do, it makes the, the tear even worse, right? Because when you wash that new piece of cloth, it's going to shrink and it's going to pull and it's just going to... It's a never-ending battle. Amen. New creature in Christ. Transformation. Metamorphosis. When we start thinking the way God would have us think... When we renew our mind in the Word of God, we have developed not just an appreciation, not just kind of, you know, I'm, 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 I'm good with the Word of God, but I'm kind of casual about that. When we have a love for the truth, when we're pursuing the truth, when we're pouring our heart into it, the Scripture says this about loving God. First commandment, love God with all of your what? Heart? Mind? Everybody say mind. Get it together right here. Love Him with everything that's here. Love God with all of your heart, with all your mind, all your spirit, all your power, everything that's in you. All right. Now then, uh, John's Gospel, chapter 8, and verse 32, familiar passage. Um, I want you to... Uh, how many free people in the house today? Okay, there's like six of you. Kind of sure you are. I know that was quick, so I'm going to give you a chance. Now you know the question that's coming. Um, I want you to think on it just a little bit. See, m my freedom didn't come from a president or a senator or a congressman. My freedom come from a Savior. Whom the Son sets free is free. And now listen to me, Christians, and I'm not saying that just to be mouthy or to be lippy. I want you to understand the, the, the context and the depth of your freedom. Nobody can take this from you. They can't take your freedom from you. They can, 
They can pass all kinds of laws of this, that, or whatever. There can be all kinds of persecution. But how many all know Jesus was setting them? Nero was burning them in his gardens, and Jesus was still setting them free. Amen. When Jesus came, <coughs> he came not to bind us. When we read the story here, just a little bit about the maniac of Gadara. Um, Jesus, the world had been trying to bind him. He didn't need to be bound. He needed to be set free. And it's a power. You can't, you can't overcome spiritual obstacles with natural remedies. Right. Amen. You need the power of the Spirit of God. We're going to pray as we close here in a little bit. And we're going to, if there was ever a time we needed to have, and I'm talking about me, I'm talking about you, I'm talking about us as a church. If there was ever a time that the church global, universal, ever needed more of the power of God, and I believe it's available, I would say now is the time. Anybody agree with me about the power of God? We need, so why, why don't we pray? Why don't we seek? Why don't we pursue? We're going to pray for more power of God to be manifest in our lives. We're going to yield to that power. How many of y'all know it's not just enough to pray for the power? You've got to yield to the power of God so that you can use or you can operate. You can live in the power of God. Now, <clears throat> so you'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. I'm going to ask you then. How many free people in the house this morning? Amen. There we go. There we go. Free people. Isn't freedom a wonderful thing? So now that you know that you're free, what's holding you back? Hmm? Don't, don't, don't see. I, I think that one of the biggest things of the enemy, um, look, look with me at, at, at 2 Thessalonians. I want to pick up verses 13 and 14 real quickly right here. There's a, there's a word here that I want you to look at. And this is where we again we're, we're, was at last week. Uh, we're, just, we're just down the, down the chapter a few verses from where we stopped in verse 11. But we're bound to give thanks always. Wasn't that a good thanksgiving service that we just had right here? Huh? Just thanking you, Lord God, for doing And when you begin to praise God, worship God, the Spirit of God, listen, the Lord's in this house. He begins. He, listen, He can't do anything but what He is or who He is. He's just going to do His God thing if we'll create that environment. The Lord inhabits the praises of His people. And so as you begin to praise God, it builds literally God habitat. It's a, it is an environment by which the Spirit of God is invited to come in and do what the Spirit of God does. He sanctifies, He leads us, He guides us, He empowers us, and the list goes on and on about the things of the Spirit of God. We're bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification. Everybody say sanctification. Sanctification of the Spirit, literally one of the acts or one of the works of the Holy Spirit is to set you apart. Look over at your neighbor and tell them, you're a little different. And that's a good thing. You're a little different. Sanctification is you're set apart. You're not like the rest of the world, and we're not supposed to be like that. You've been sanctified. That's not a work of yourself. See, it's a work of the Holy Spirit, Right? The sanctification of the Spirit that sets you apart. When the Spirit of God, this transforming power of God begins to work in your life, old things pass away, all things become new. Metamorphosis. You, you begin to think about things differently. I, I have a very different world view than what I used to have. Anybody say amen? amen? Approach those things. I may even start breaking for squirrels one of these days. Who knows? Wild. Now then... Through sanctification of the Spirit, see, we've been, we've been set apart, we've been chosen unto salvation through, th through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Whereunto He called you by our gospel, the good news, this gospel of Christ, the apostles' doctrine, right? Continuing steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, breaking bread, right? Remember that about a month ago? Okay. Whereunto He called you by our gospel to the obtaining. Everybody say obtain. We live in a world where if hell has its way, hell will detain you. Let me, let me say it this way. This is an easy way to, to remember. Satan always fights the message, the messenger, and the method. Always. You've, you've heard me say that for years. And, and I, like, I, I can remember those, those kinds of things when I put them in those contexts. So everybody say it with me. Satan always fights the message, the messenger, and the method. 
Hell hates truth because he's the father of lies. If you believe truth, he can't deal with you. It, truth sets you apart. Truth sanctifies you. And so, Lord God, here's our prayer for right now. Just let the truth come out, huh? Just let the truth come out. Let liars be exposed and let the liars huh, be held accountable. And we just let, I'm good with the truth coming out. How about you? And so we need to be praying for truth in the middle of all of this stuff that's going on and all of this chaos and this and that. God, just let truth come out. And when truth comes out, huh? Well, people will reject truth. Just because truth comes out don't mean people are going to accept it. But anyway, but I'm going to tell you what. When I, I want it to come out so convincingly. Huh? Can we pray for the power of God to, to reveal truth in such a convincing manner? Sure. And so, Lord God, let, let truth come out. He fights the messenger. When we read this story here just in a little bit, I'm just prefacing Mark chapter 5. We'll go there in a little bit. Jesus says to His disciples in chapter 4, Mark chapter 4, He said, let's go to the other side. They get in a ship and they're going to the other side. And how many all know, they encounter a horrible storm. This storm is blowing, the boat's about filled up. The disciples are convinced they're going to die, but Jesus is taking a nap. Kick back, no worries. There is such an anxiousness in our society today. And I get it, but you don't have to have it. You don't have to be worried. You don't have to be anxious about these things. He says, now be anxious for nothing, but in all things, by prayer and supplication, let your request be made. Right? And that, that's exactly what your Bible says, okay? It's exactly what it says. So just don't be anxious about it. So Jesus is kicked back, but hell is fighting the messenger because it is scared of the message. We're going to keep the Lord from getting to the other side. And what's He going to the other side for? One crazy dude. One dude that the rest of the world don't want anything to do with. How many of y'all got one of those neighbors? <laughs> hmm? If you can't think, listen to me, if you can't think of one, you might be that neighbor. All right, now you're with me. All right, oh, no, I wouldn't be me. I, I got one. I got a name now, Pastor. Yeah, I'm, I'm in with you now. Yeah. All right. Just making sure you're still hooked up. He fights the message because he can't deal with truth. To fight the message, he has to fight the messenger to prevent, to hinder. The crowd I run with is, there, there's a lot of ministers in the crowd I run with. I've never seen uh, so many pastors that are struggling right now. Pray for pastors. Pray for leaders, spiritual leaders, teachers. I see on the other hand, I see some that are just absolutely on fire. It's like, woo, we've been waiting for this fight a long time, and here it is. You know, and they're winding up the haymaker, man. Let's get after it, you know. I want to be part of that crowd, amen. So you got to make up your mind. And, uh, but when you carry the message, now listen to me, you don't get a free pass. If, if, if hell considers you a threat, you'll be treated like a threat. Huh? So don't think it's strange whenever, listen to me, when all hell breaks loose around you, don't think it's strange because you're not on friendly terms with Satan. He fights the message, the messenger, and the third one is he fights the method. The method by which we come to church. How many of y'all know? Hell trying to fight the method of just coming to church. Bible study. Can't sing. Can't have Thanksgiving. Christmas will be next, right? Then you can't. Listen, they're all going to happen. They're all going to come. And guess what? I'm getting together with the people I love and I'm going to Thanksgive. I'm going to Christmas it up and I'm going to New Year it up. And, and, and I know that that upsets some and I know that that... Listen... We are free people, and you get to walk it how you choose to walk it. I'm going to walk it right here. Now, I'm, not, I'm going to do to the... To, as a shepherd, I'm going to do my best to make sure that I never jeopardize my sheep. My job as a shepherd is to lead them, feed them, and protect them. So I want to get them to green pastures, still waters. I want to make sure that when the wolf comes in... We can uncloak him, right? The wolves in sheep's clothing, huh? We're going to peel him and we're going to expose him for who he is. Amen. All right. Enough said on all of that. 
Now then, everybody say obtain. So just a couple of real quick notes right here. Hell wants to detain you. If, if, if hell can detain you, then what hell wants to do is put you in restraint. It wants to restrain you. All right? That's just one of those easier, easy ways to kind of remember this. And, 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 and so having been detained, ha having now been restrained, putting us in bondage, putting us in fetters, putting us in chains in our mind, chains in our heart, you can't do this, you can't do that. Hell wanting to tell, listen, I'm, I'm free in Jesus. Now, you, you can't use that liberty as an occasion to serve the flesh. Isn't that what he says about that? And so I'm, uh, we're going to preach a balanced message in this right here. But I'm not going to come into bondage and confirmation or to be conformed to the world's thinking. I want to be transformed by the renewing of mind. And here's the way that reads in, in, in the Greek a little more properly. It would say, so that you can become the living proof. So that you are the living proof of the acceptable, the perfect, that will of God you literally begin to live that will of God out. You become the living proof of that will of God. And so, as hell fights the method of us getting together, listen, we're going to keep praying. When we pray, things change. Amen? We're going to keep laying hands on people. We're going to pray. We're going to, we're going to be smart. Amen? We're, not, we're, we're, we're going to be wise as a serpent and harmless as doves in this thing. It's not about rebellion. It's about when Jesus came for this man across the sea, this crazy guy, um, he didn't come to bind him. He came to set him free one at a time. <clears throat> Us, uh, one of the things that um, I see in church, let me just say this. We've been called to obtain... I, I said this line last week, and I'm going to repeat it. It's been pretty easy to be a Christian in our culture and in our society for a long time. We've not had to pay a big bill to be a Christian. Here's where I'm pretty sure that, and when I talk about the church in this context, I'm talking about the universal church. The Church of America has gotten to a maintenance mode. I, I, hell would love to detain you. Hell wants to restrain you. Then it wants to drain you of all your hope and faith and belief and dreams, and it just ain't going to happen. But one of the most dangerous places that church can get to, and when I'm talking about church, I'm not talking about the building, I'm talking about us, is just getting into maintenance. We just keep doing the same old thing, time after time and week after week. We're going to go to church, and we're going to do our church thing. We're going to sing a song. We're going to take up an offering. Preacher's going to preach, and we're going to go home. I love it when the Holy Spirit interrupts our schedule. Yes. Amen. I love it. Holy Spirit, come. And you know how that happened? That happens because you prayed. That happens because you pressed in. That happens because you was just right here praising your hearts out and your face off, man. Just getting it right down here in front of Jesus and saying, man, just bring it on, Jesus. I, I don't want to go through religious motion. I don't want to go through hollow forms. In, in, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, um, Look with me right here. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1. We're going to read five verses right here. It gives us a picture of the end time. And then I'm going to read, uh, we're going to read Mark. And we're going to close it up for today. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times will come. Everybody say they, they're here. huh? It's dangerous time. My goodness, it's, it's wild right there. Men will be, see if, you can, see if you can see this. Anybody hear, hear any of this lately? Men shall be lovers of their own self, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. Man, I could tee off on that one for a while. Truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers. Despisers of those that are good. Why? Just because they're good. Huh? Despisers of those. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And here's the one I wanted to get to. This is the maintenance crowd having a form of godliness. But what? Denying the power. Oh God, give us, give us more power. Let's press in and let's pray for more power. Let's yield so more power can flow through us. Amen. Let's, let's hook up. Amen. With the power of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from what? Turn away. Turn away. Not interested in that. Anybody interested? See, see a form... 
A, a form is a hollow shell of what's supposed to be there. Huh? It's just a form, but it has no substance. When, when Tiny and I drew up the, the blueprint for this building, and, and, and we set the forms to pour this concrete in right here, your building is not setting on a form of concrete. We pulled the forms away after the substance was poured in and set up and got hard, and this building is built upon eight inch wide, nine foot tall concrete walls. Not a form. You, listen, you can't build on a form. It's a hollow, huh? A hollow substance. Or a hollow form without a substance. Now, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Let's go to Mark. Read, read Romans chapter 8, verses 2 through 7. And, and, and I don't have... Here, here's, the, here's the short version of that right there. And you, 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 go to, you go to Mark, uh, Mark's Gospel, chapter 5, and we'll start at verse 1. The short version of that in, in, in verse 2, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. Everybody say, I've been made free from the law of sin and death. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. And when you get a hold of those principles, when you get a hold of those rules that Christ has laid out, those rules, those laws in Christ, those are spiritual laws. And then he goes on, he says, when you get down to verse 5, he starts talking about the carnal mind and the spiritual mind. And he says, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace in Christ Jesus. How many of y'all like life and peace better than death? It's a lot better choice, amen? So I'm in on that one right there. So to be spiritually minded. Now... How do we come to this transformation of mind? One person at a time. You've got to be really on purpose. You've got to press through the storms to get to the other side sometimes. Sometimes you're taking people with you. And sometimes it'd just be easier to go on your own than take people with you. But how many all know we grow as a group, we live as a family, and we work and we minister. We are a body ministry, and so we need one another. Jesus taking the crew over there with Him. They're all up, worried, afraid. He's asleep. Resting, and they're on a mission. One poor crazy dude. Let's talk about him. Right here. Romans, or Romans. We already got past Romans. Mark chapter 5, verse 1. And they came over to the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. What a welcoming party, right? Listen to this. Who had his dwelling among the tombs. And pause right there. What kind of brokenness, what kind of hurt is going on in a person's life when they are more comfortable living among the dead than they are living among the living? That's a horrible place to be. But yet in our culture and in our society... Here's what we know. You're either alive in Christ or you're dead in sin and trespass. And there's a lot of people in this world who needs to know the power of a transformed mind. And the only way they can do that is to have someone that will intentionally come across to the other side. He is a bridge and a barrier. You can see both of those in Christ Jesus right here. He is a bridge to come over and get a hold of this wild, crazy guy who's living in the tombs. The world's trying to fix their problems. As listen, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. They'd been trying to. The world does not have the solutions for what it needs. You can only find them in Christ Jesus. Anybody say amen on that one? That's true. It's just true. And so, whenever Jesus, who comes intensely, he comes over, he's met with this guy, he comes out, he's got his dwelling among the tombs. The tombs not only are representative, it's a legitimate, literal tomb. This guy's living among the dead because he feels comfortable there. 
But today, we have a lot of other tombs that we could talk about. Tombs of sin, tombs of perversion, tombs of abuse, tombs of addiction, tombs of... Amen? Anybody say amen? Anybody ever been, beside me, ever been dead in sin and trespass? I know who I was before new wine got poured in and before the old man passed away and this guy became new. I know who I was. Anybody say, Yeah. No one could bind him, no, not with chains. Verse 4, because that he had been often. Everybody say often. So that, that, that word didn't even have to be there, but there it is. Often. The world trying to do this. The world trying to fix this problem. Listen, the, the world don't have near the amount of solutions that it thinks it does. You be careful who you let solve your problems. Everybody say Amen. And just, you, you may, listen, I'm going to preach it the way I believe the Holy Spirit's revealing it to me. You make up your own mind. I just want to encourage you as your pastor and as your friend and as your neighbor, uh, the, world, the, the world can't fix a lot of the stuff that we have to deal with in this, this life. On, amen. Thank God for God. Huh? And His Son Jesus and precious Holy Spirit and the power of the Word of God and a renewed mind don't think like I used to think. Amen because that they had often bound him with fetters and chains. Well, the problem was they was binding him. He didn't need to be bound. He needed to be set free. Can we, can we, isn't that just so obvious? But to keep trying to bind, keep trying to put more restriction, keep trying to put more, more law, keep trying to keep, we pass, we're going to fix it if we pass this. And what we wind up doing is we start crippling good people and good business and... We pass some of the ugliest things. We can kill babies after they're born without natural affection. Hmm? Wow. Got thick then. Because he'd been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. Last Sunday morning, when little Kyler and the Spirit of God started touching his little seven-year-old heart right back there, uh, I, I don't think that he'd been a real wild man yet. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. But isn't it a beautiful thing that the voice of the Holy Spirit could talk to such a pure, little, sweet, innocent heart? And I'm going to go baptize him here before long. And... Um, we don't have the power to transform someone. What we do is we have the message that transforms. You have a truth that transforms. And if you'll love that truth, that truth's what's going to pour out of you. When the world starts squeezing you, it's like a sponge. When the world starts squeezing you, whatever's in there is going to come out. Amen. They've been trying to tame him. They've been trying to just bind him more. And he was already bound. He was bound in his mind. He was bound in his spirit. And always, night and day, listen to this, what a horrible place to be. What a tormented place to be. Always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs. He's crying. Where's the compassion? He was cutting himself with stones. We've ministered through the years to multiple, multiple people whose pain on the inside was so deep, so strong, that they would cut themselves on the outside to create a distraction from the pain on the inside. And you say, how could anybody get... That's not the right mind. It's a broken. It's a hurting. And there's a bunch of them out there. And you don't have to travel far. It's heavy stuff. But we're just into maintenance. Let's go to church. Let's take church out to the world. Let's take Jesus. As a matter of fact, don't even worry about church. Let's just take Jesus to them. Let's go wherever they're at. When Jesus told his disciples, he said, I'll make you fishers of men. Let me tell you something this old county, this old country boy knows about fishing. You catch fish where they are, not where you want them to be. Huh? Shelby, you're a guide on the river. You make a living guiding fishing. You ever catch a fish just because you wanted it to be there? It don't happen that way, does it? Huh? You catch fish where they are. And so this one fish 
this wild man. He's across the sea in Decapolis, region of Gadara, and Jesus is coming to get him. Kind of like T.D. Jake's story Scott was talking about. I'm coming to get you, son. I'm coming to get you. All right. Whoever's going to play, come on up, and we're going we're to finish up right here. He's crying. He's tormented. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and he worshipped him. Well, what a change. But now listen to the next verse. And he cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High? Hmm? What do I, what a, so it goes all the, uh, what an about face, what a complete turnaround from worshiping him to what have I got to do with you? Who, who was talking out of him? Was that the guy talking or you think that might have been the devil talking out of him? Anybody ever been around anybody? You just knew the devil was talking out of him? But don't know anybody talk about your mother-in-law right now. Right now is not the time to be. All right, stay with me. We're about to finish here. All right. All the mother-in-law say, we love you, D.L. Okay, come on, give it to me. All right. I, the, the Son of the Most High God, I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. So from worship, he begins to make accusation, you're here to torment. Well, Jesus wasn't there to torment the man. Hmm? And the world thinks sometimes that we're, we're, we're part of the problem. We have to make sure that they understand that there's a heart in our, in our being that's here about compassion. Mm -hmm. One at a time. How many of y'all can think of a name? You got a neighbor, huh? Somebody's broken. What happened if we could, would our community improve? Would, would, would their life improve? If their name could get written down this year? What if you prayed every day just for that one person? What if, what if, what if you put their name up there and, 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 and your church family began to pray? What if? You believe prayer changes things? And he asked him, what's your name? He told him, come out of me, unclean spirit. He said, my name is Legion, we're many. And besought him much that he would not send him away out of the country. There was nine of the mountains, a great herd of swine feeding, and all of the devils besought him, saying, send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And I don't have time to teach you a, a series on, on demonology right here. Ask yourself this question, why is it that those demons didn't want to leave that particular area? I don't have time to answer that for you, but it's something for you to think about. Don't, don't make us leave. There's a, bunch of, there's a bunch of hogs over here. I was raised on a hog farm. I despise a hog until it becomes bacon. With everything that's in me, I dislike pork until it becomes ham. I'm fond of the term pork chop. <laughs> All right. You got it. Now listen to this. this. This is so wild to me. Send us to the hogs. I want to go live in a hog. Where you could send me is worse than living in a hog. Send me to a hog. Forthwith Jesus gave them leave and the unclean spirits went out. Entered into the swine. Now listen to this. Here's the hog's reaction. They'd rather die than live with the devil. Do you know how vile, how mean, how ugly? They are the nastiest, stinking, they are an unclean creature. They are considered unclean in Scripture. Hmm? They take off the whole herd. They run violently. I mean, why is that word included in verse 13? Violently down a steep place in the sea. There were about 2,000 of them. They were choked in the sea. They that fed the swine fled and told it into the city and in the country. And they went out to see what was done. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil. Look at this. Boy, you talk about transformation. Everybody say transformation. Right here. This is, what, this is, this is a picture of metamorphosis. Spiritual metamorphosis and they saw him that was past tense possessed with the devil who had the legion how many all know our Lord and Savior the same Jesus that lives in you by the same power of the same Holy Spirit huh? 
cast that devil out. These signs shall follow them that believe, right? Mark chapter 16, verse 15 to the end. Huh? They'll cast out devils. They'll speak with new... That's what your Bible says, see? Now, now look. They saw him, everybody say, sitting, clothed, and in his right mind. How many of y'all know that's a good place to be if you've been a wild man? Huh? And only the power of God. Now listen to me. God, there's no shortage of power in heaven. The shortage is on our end. Not because it's not available, just because... See, it don't take much power to maintain. We're not trying to obtain. We're just maintaining. I remember my dad preaching a sermon years and years ago when he talked about a rut. And he talked about when you get in a rut, a rut, his definition of a rut was a grave with both ends knocked out of it. That's what a rut is. You just keep on doing the same thing. The way I see it determines what I do. What I do determines what I get. This is the way I see it. That's going to determine what I do. It's what I get. And I keep doing the same old thing. And I keep doing the same old thing. And I turned a 14-day trip into 40 years because of fear and doubt and unbelief. And I spent that entire time in the wilderness going around in circles around Mount Sinai for 40 years. Never having gone into the promise of God. What do you say we cross on over the Jordan? What do you say? Let's step on over. Let's stand and we're going to pray. And we're just going to seek the Lord's face. I'm going to read the rest of this. We're going to pray concerning the power of God. They saw Him. He was sitting... He's clothed. He's in his right mind. Listen to this. And they were afraid. They were afraid. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart. The, the, the world would rather have the problem. The world we're living in today would rather have the problem than to have Jesus. I believe that. I should say a good portion of the world. I would rather have this wild, crazy anarchy, absolute, don't you push that Jesus thing on me. Well, I'm not pushing nothing on you. You're going to have to decide, squirrel, where you're going to get out of the road or not. Hmm? Your decision, see. Now, I'm not talking to you. I know where you guys are all at. On the right side of the road, look over at your neighbor and say, right mind, right clothes, yeah. Yeah, I can see that right here. Y'all been sitting. That's why I had you get up for a while. Sitting, clothed, in your right mind. You're good people. Love you. They wanted him to leave. Jesus and his party, they began, verse 17. They, they, they wanted him to leave their coast. And verse 18, And when he was coming to the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed. Prayed him. He asked him. Petition. That he might, might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him or did not allow him. But he said unto him, You go home to your friends and you tell them how great things the Lord hath done. You don't have to go very far. You can stay right here. How many of y'all had God do some really good things for you? Right here, right now. You just start telling. You just start telling. You just be that living testimony. But don't be afraid to speak up. God, give us more power, right? Has done good things for you and had compassion on you. And listen to what? Listen to this, this, this guy who's gone, this metamorphosis. Just before Jesus, prior to Jesus, he's screaming, he's crying, he's cutting himself, he's running around naked, he's terrorizing Decapolis, that entire community. And they don't know what to do with him. And now he's well, and they still don't know what to do with him. My thought is the world don't know what to do with much of anything. So don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed. And he departed and began to publish. He began to preach. He began to teach. He began to speak. He began to testify in Decapolis how great the things Jesus had done for him. And all men did marvel. Father God, we bow before you.
We thank you, Lord God, for your power and manifestation during our worship time, our praise time this morning. And we just bow before you, Lord God. And here's where our heart is. We don't want to be that group that's just into maintenance. To have a form, just a hollow form of godliness, but deny the power. That's the substance. Lord God, we pray for the power to love people who are hard to love. We pray for the power to put the devil in his place under our feet. We pray, Lord God, for power, more boldness, more courage, Lord God. And Father, we pray also not just for more power, but that we would yield to that power. Father God, we're, we're, in, we're in such a tiz, we're, we've got to get to the next thing. We've forgotten how to yield sometimes to your power. I don't want our church, I don't ever want our service to become so programmed that we can't yield to your Holy Spirit. When you begin to start speaking to people, drawing their hearts. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done this morning your power in manifestation here. Thank you, Lord God, for answered prayer and the testimony of that off of that prayer board. In Jesus' name, we just put our hand that way and we pray over it. We pray over those, those names and those situations on our prayer list. We lift each one of them to you, Lord God. We pray for that, that one wild man, that wild woman, that wild situation. in our community, in our circle of influence, Lord God. We pray. Sitting, clothed, and in their right mind. Transformation. A transformed mind. Father, we thank You that You give us strength to be Your messenger to carry the message and to continue in the method that you laid out. We give you praise now. We pray for power, to yield to that power, and then to be able to walk in and to use that power wisely. In Jesus' name. Everybody agreed, said amen. amen. Look over to your neighbor and tell them, now don't get squirrely when you leave here, huh? Don't you get hey, don't you get squirrely on the Lord when you leave her. Right mind. Hey man, we love you. God bless. Next week we're gonna Christmas it up some. Come have some come have some Christmas with us. Let's celebrate the birth of our Savior. Let's put it on. Let's do it up. Amen. We love you. God bless. Have a wonderful, wonderful day and week in Jesus. We love you.